Annyeong. Welcome to the Cryptonomatron channel. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. It's Korean week on the Cryptonomatron, and this is the second video in the series. So uh, if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button and please click on the bell notification icon and you'll get notified as soon as I upload new content and soon as I go live as well. Uh, thanks for joining the community. Really appreciate it. Let's get on with the video. So let's start off with Metadium. Now, Metadium or Metadium, I'm not sure I'm even pronouncing that correctly, is a decentralized authentication and identity platform. It sort of solves the issue of online trust identity, much like Civic, the key, self key. There are several others attempting to do similar things. And what this means is you can have your identity and uh, use it with uh, interaction with the real world, banking systems, the government, for example, if you go and apply for a driver's license, um, you know, telecom, internet of things, it's got quite a, a wide scope. So it's been started by a guy called Ryan Err, um, who is uh, ex-Cisco, I believe, and Jeffrey Song, ex-Samsung, and Richard Yoon, who is... Um, from the CoinPlug team, and I believe CoinPlug are partners with this project as well. Now, there is limited information on this project. I did try to find as much as I could on the internet, but as yet, it's still relatively unknown. So a couple of cool facts about this project. They have been backed by a lot of investment funds, a lot of venture capital funds, including 500 startups. Now, they are an American venture capital firm uh, that are partnered up with Huobi, um, actually with Huobi Labs, who are Huobi's uh, blockchain incubator that was started last year under the main Huobi brand. Now, you might be familiar with Huobi. They've got a very large uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Also on the advisory body is a certain Roger Veer, the uh, um, founder of Bitcoin Cash and uh, early uh, blockchain evangelist and Bitcoin evangelist and Bitcoin investor. However, he's a bit polarizing at the moment. So uh, it may put some people off actually uh, investing or um, getting involved with this particular project. And that's unfortunate. So looking at the roadmap, and I'm sure the new one will be on the updated website, um, there's not really a lot of information as to what's already happened. So I'm not sure. They were obviously proposing a token sale. They may have had a private token sale and sold out. However, I don't know whether they actually had a public sale. Um, going on the Telegram group, there's not a lot of people that know anything um, about the project. I think it may actually be going direct to exchange, so private sale only. Anyway, it's one to keep an eye on. It's certainly... Um, being talked about in Korea and uh, elsewhere. So, you know, um, how far along are we in the roadmap in terms of technology? Again, hard to tell really at the moment because of the limited information that's available, especially in English and especially when you Google for this project. I mean, I think there's uh, only, well, there's a couple of videos with it as a tag, but I'm not even sure, you know, if anybody's speaking about this on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, definitely one to keep an eye on uh, if there isn't a public sale or hasn't been a public sale because that will mean that you can get in at an early stage and benefit if this project really does go forward, which I think it potentially could. So according to the roadmap, the testnet will be going live, the first version in quarter three this year, and that will be along with the API for developers and the wallet SDK for developers as well. And the testnet will then uh, move into quarter four with an open beta. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're looking at the, the beta being available by the end of this year. Testnet next year, early quarter one, 2019, there will be an update. Mainnet will come online 2019 quarter two uh, with the team scale up as well. Also, blockchain release will be on the mainnet and domestic service and marketing then as well. So we're looking before the mainnet quarter two, 2019. Korean fact, foreigners are banned from trading on local Korean cryptocurrency exchanges. This came into being in January this year, and basically the Financial Services Commission in Korea uh, had a blanket ban on all foreigners and underage people from trading on local cryptocurrency exchanges in Korea. The reason for this was the government was apparently concerned about manipulation of market conditions and injection of illegal funds. Uh, while market funds are leaked into more speculative investments. They also view that foreigners and miners investments contribute to areas of concern. So all foreigners, that includes residents, non-residents, and Kyopo, which are ethnic Koreans with foreign citizenship, are actually banned from trading cryptocurrencies in Korea. 
So let's talk about Hash now. Now, Hash are a Korean blockchain investments fund and startup incubator. They were founded just 18 months ago. They started off with 600,000 USD in capital, and now they've got about 250 million US dollars in assets under management. Pretty impressive. Small team. Um, only a dozen people behind it and uh, the backgrounds range from serial entrepreneurs uh, to even an engineer like myself and investment professionals as well. So the CEO Simon Kim and Hwisan Kim, they are early blockchain evangelists. They're also community leaders in Korea, pushing development in the industry and um, hoping for institutional adoption. They've now got a quarter of a billion US dollars in assets under management. It's quite phenomenal, quite a lot of money. Now, where's that invested? Well, the primary investments are in EOS, Icon, a local favorite, and Ontology as well. Not a great surprise. There are three good picks there, I feel. And they've also got some others. Let's take a look on their website, see what uh, other projects are in their portfolio. So they are an accelerator. Uh, for different cryptocurrency projects in um, Korea, not least of all uh, the uh, TTC project or TTC protocol, I should say, that I reviewed yesterday. Link is up there. And uh, also Sentinel Protocol, they've got a ICO upcoming very, very soon. And I will be doing a review on that project tomorrow. So stay tuned. Another banger of a project coming out of Korea. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited and bullish on that one. Um, so we'll we'll dig down into it and see what's going on with that. But the investment portfolio you can see behind me, they've been very, very busy bunnies, haven't they really? They're, they're in many, many different projects. At a private sales stage, I would suggest for most of these with the, obviously the amount of investment that they'll be going in. And you can see there a couple of favorites. Quark Chain, again, I reviewed them the other day. Link is up above. And Metadium, we just spoke about them. Uh, Tomo Chain there, an uh, um, off-chain scaling solution for Ethereum. Some very, very interesting projects there. Quantstamp, the uh, security auditing um, project. Uh, Decentraland, Misigo even, and um, Quantum down at the bottom there. So yeah, a, a, a very broad selection of projects. Every single one of them, I would say, is probably going to be a reasonably decent investment. Korean fact. South Korea is the world's third largest digital currency market, a market so huge it caused ruptions when back in January, the Korean government decided to have a little clamp down and raided the country's largest exchanges, including BitThumb, and also made noises about banning cryptocurrencies. They banned ICOs. Thankfully, they've had a change of heart and it looks like ICOs are on the way back. And they... Uh, drew the ire of a lot of young people in South Korea. Now, South Korea are very, um, they have a very, very good IT infrastructure. There's a lot of young people obviously involved in cryptocurrency, um, trading cryptocurrency, software development, that type of thing. So, you know, it really wasn't a clever move, but, you know, it looks like they've um, softened their hearts a little bit. Now, cryptocurrency in, uh, in South Korea, uh, trading it is a very lucrative venture. Apparently, 11% of people between 15 and 29 are unemployed employed in the country. So there's nothing for them to do. And uh, housing, rents, uh, mortgages are almost unaffordable. They're just, uh, they're, you know, they're uh, beyond the reach of ordinary people, especially younger people in Korea. So when the government clamped down in January, people took to social media um, and posted photos of them smashing up their apartments and, um, you know, threatening to commit suicide. So not very good. Uh, but Thankfully, as I said, they look to have a change of heart and they've, uh, they've uh, backed down from their ICO ban. So ICOs coming back to South Korea could be fantastic. Could be a big year, the second half of 2018 for Korean projects, especially initial coin offerings. And uh, just another thing about uh, back then in January, they got together, they, a quarter, over a quarter of a million people uh, signed a petition to petition the government about their stance on cryptocurrencies as well. So it just goes to show how strong cryptocurrency support is in the country. So last project I want to talk about today is Terra. Terra is a stable coin, a stable cryptocurrency, much like Tether, but a little bit different and with more improvements. So price stable cryptocurrency that reduces the risk, projects can use it to reduce the risk of uh, volatility in cryptocurrency. It's got some interesting features. Um, it will be a decentralized coin, free from speculation and regulation. It will be like Tether, but on the blockchain. So, you know, with Tether, there's been a lot of question marks over their actual um, 
backing of the coin in US dollars, in assets. Whereas if you've got your uh, assets documented on the blockchain, then it's completely transparent. So that's what they're hoping uh, to do. Therefore, getting around the regulation. And as far as speculation is concerned, people taking a punt on it, they will have a stability reserve that will completely back the economy of the coin. So there will, will be um, assets there depending on how large the economy is for the project. Now, um, we have very limited information about this. Again, there's no website. There, I'm only going on an interview uh, that I saw on CNBC Africa. Thanks, Ran. Um, so there are going to be two coins, if I'm not wrong, called Terra and Luna. Now, Terra is going to be the one that's pegged to the US dollar, and Luna is going to be the community coin. So every time um, Terra is accumulated or spent, Luna will grow in value, and therefore, um, you know, that That'll be the one that you can um, uh, essentially hold as the community coin. So it um, sounds like a fantastic project. But again, very, very limited information at this early stage about it. But certainly one to keep an eye on for the future. There's no doubt in my mind about that at all. Korea fact. South Korea's BitThumb, the second largest cryptocurrency exchange in the country, is the only publicly listed cryptocurrency exchange in the world. They have reserves worth $6 billion in 12 different cryptocurrencies. That is a phenomenal amount of money, guys. Um, the exchange itself has 220 employees, 15 shareholders, and it generated about $312 million in revenue last year in 2017. That is just absolutely fantastic. Now, they own close to 50,000 Bitcoin, um, over half a million Ether, 55,000 Dash, uh, almost half a million Litecoin, and about five. 0.6 million Ethereum Classic and many, many more as well. Now, uh, the exchange does keep its own coins. Apparently, 7% of the deposited cryptocurrencies uh, were or belong to BitThumb Exchange themselves, while clients deposited the rest, the other 93%. So BitThumb has been growing its business. They have a partnership with WinCube to sell mobile vouchers uh, through gift certificates. They are going to supply kiosks to restaurants, cafes, eateries to facilitate crypto payments as well. And they've got a travel site with accommodation facilities that you can book cryptocurrency on. They're also going to allow uh, crypto payments at 8,000 physical stores throughout South Korea. So definitely a business to keep an eye on. So that ends the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you haven't already, click that bell notification icon and you'll get notified as soon as I upload new content. Tomorrow, I'm doing a review on Sentinel Protocol. It's an ICO that I'm very excited about. You don't want to miss that, guys. So uh, thanks for joining me today. And be sure to be tuned in tomorrow for my Sentinel Protocol ICO review. Hamsa kapnida. Annyeong!